Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey there. We're so glad you've joined us again for Growing in Grace, our humble little podcast that is yet heard throughout multiple countries around the world, um, thousands upon thousands of downloads per week. And you know what? It happened all through word of mouth. So thank you for sharing. I'm Mike, along with Joel, and uh, we're in the middle of a series right now called Summarizing the Scripture, uh, and uh, we'll continue with that here as, uh, as we move forward, but hope you're having a good week, Joel. Doing very well. Just a quick word about um, the Clash of the Covenants, uh, just your book that you wrote. It's been out almost well, a year. And I want to say thank you to you, by the way. I, I see you once in a while out there. <laughs> pasting the uh, the link on social media, so that's nice of you. But yeah, I mean, you you know where my heart is at on this book because it's it's, it's your heart, too. And I look forward to the day where Joel writes a book, too, by the way, but go ahead. Yeah, it might happen someday. You never know. It, it, well, we'll see. I, I, I've, I'm sure there's a book in me uh, that will hopefully come out someday. But Clash of the Covenants, it's available on Amazon.com. Uh, right now, it's in digital form. Um, people ask you quite often, at least I've seen people ask you, and they ask me sometimes, too, when it's coming out in like a, a book form, and you, you're probably going to be uh, working on that this year. Is that right? Y- yes. Possibly. Um, I'm pretty limited on my understanding of publishing books and things like that, so... The person who was going to do it for me, um, it seems that maybe they've moved on to something else. I'm, I'm having trouble getting them to respond. So the bottom line is we want to get this in paperback form and, and make it available for people who, who aren't doing the electronic book thing, the ebook with the Kindle or the mm-hmm. Kindle app. Mm-hmm. And, and it will be easier for people to, to buy it in bulk and give it away. So give us a little time on that. Uh, you know, obviously, we're, we're in February right now in 2018. But Keep watching for it on on Amazon. We'll we'll get there, Joel. Well, I, I'll I'll find somebody who can help get this done and get it done right. Well, I'm looking forward to the movie when the movie comes out. <laughs> Clash the <movie>. of the <laughs> Covenants, and you know who should be in it? I think Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh come on! Hasta la vista, old covenant. <laughs> That's if the, I'm going to do a movie, line. Clint Eastwood has oh, to. Clint, be I knew it. you would say Clint, definitely. That would but be yes, it, the book is available only through Amazon. So if you don't have a Kindle device, it's really easy in this day and age of computers and smartphones. Download the free Kindle app. If you have an Amazon account, then you can just go to the page, purchase the book, and it will download to your to your app or to your Kindle. So do you really uh, follow the I, law? Well, <laughs> punk, do you? <laughs> oh, anyway, oh brother. So yeah, th- thanks for mentioning that and. Um, the book will answer a lot of your questions, and, and you know, if you like the podcast, you'll you'll like Clash of the Covenants. Right. Well, I'm, you said you're going to get us started on this podcast today, so what's we yeah, got? Yeah, well, let's, let's wrap up the past few weeks. One of our stepping stones here through the Bible is uh, Moses and the law, part of that old covenant. I didn't want to leave something dangling out there because we were maybe a little bit rushed toward the end of the last program, but... You know, sometimes somebody might ask, even with everything that, boy, and if you haven't caught the last three programs, at least on on this subject, um, I I encourage you to go back and catch it. Because some people, even after hearing everything we've said the past few weeks, Joel, because of the the way that they filter everything about the Bible through a legalistic, at least a somewhat legalistic mindset in many cases, as, as taught either through their church or just things that they've assumed that weren't necessarily accurate about the Old and New Covenants, they might ask the question, don't you think that the world would be a better place if everybody just kept those commandments, at least the the top ten? And, you know, probably the answer to that might be yes. If everybody was or were able to actually keep all of those commandments and to keep them perfectly— of course the world would be a better place. You heard us talking here in recent weeks. We're not against the law, but the law was contrary to us. Um, and that's why it had to be nailed to the cross, because it couldn't give us what was needed. So with that in mind, the fact that nobody can live up to that standard of perfection that the law requires, 
is it a good idea for people to try to abide by those list of commands? And to me, Joel, the answer, and you can, you can disagree with me on this, but the answer is, is no. Why? Because of some of the things we've already been talking about. It will not reduce sin. That's not what the law does. It will not bring life. It does not bring righteousness. It doesn't produce the fruit of the Spirit. It, it, it doesn't do any of those things. I know that's the mindset a lot of people have, that it, it will help us accomplish those things and set us apart and sanctify us. It just isn't true. It's just not in the Bible. All right. Your mm-hmm. turn. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I totally agree. <laughs> so, I totally sometimes agree. I feel like I'm venting and, and I need to <laughs> I need to stop talking. <laughs> Well, it's true. I do the same thing, too. But where you're going there was exactly what I had in mind, because I have open in front of me Romans 7, 10. Uh, well, 9 and 10, where Paul said, I was once alive without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment, which was to bring life, I found to bring death. And so you know, the law, you would think, that it would bring life, but it really only brings death. I know we're going to be talking about the Psalms pretty soon, and and David in the Psalms uh, said he meditates upon the law. He meditates upon God's Word because uh, he'll find life in it. It'll keep him from sinning. But David didn't have this same revelation that, that Paul had. Paul had been a Pharisee under the law, just like David had been under the law, and thought that following the law would bring life. But it was revealed to Paul by Jesus that it only brings death. In Galatians uh, 3.21, Paul says again, is the law against the promises of God? Certainly not, for if there had been a law which could have given life, then truly righteousness would have been by the law. But the scripture has confined all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. So again, the law could not give life. Life could only come in one way. See, the problem, we talked about Adam several weeks ago. Sin entered the world through Adam, and death through sin. Really, our problem is death, and it came from this knowledge of good and evil. We needed to be delivered from trying to live by the knowledge of good and evil, which brought death And the only way that that could happen is through Jesus Christ. And so uh, there was no commandment that could have brought life. Life could not come from the law. And sin was only increased through the law. So the way of life in Jesus Christ is to die to the law, to be not under the law any longer, but really to live a life in faith, the life of Christ that's in us. And so, you know, not a fleshly commandment, because the law is really fleshly. People don't understand this, but the law is fleshly. But faith, that's the ministry of the Spirit that we, uh, that we need to live by. Yeah, we talked about that. The law is fleshly. And if you need something specific to, to try to get that ball rolling in your own personal study time, look at the beginning of Galatians chapter 3, when Paul was talking to those foolish Galatians, right? So the law, you know, why was the law given? Well, it, simply put, it was given to reveal sin, to make people aware of it. The book of Hebrews tells us that under that covenant, that old covenant, under that law, under those commands, all of them, not just the top 10, but including the top 10 and the other hundreds of laws, they brought a sin consciousness from which people couldn't escape. No matter how many animal sacrifices they did, no matter how many confessions of sin that they made, no matter how hard they tried to keep that law. There was always this consciousness of sin, a guilty conscience, and they couldn't get away from it until the final sacrifice. All those sacrifices under the old couldn't get the job done. And yes, it included all of the law, as we've talked about in recent weeks, all of the law, all of the the commandments, the top 10 and beyond. Some people think that somehow those, those stone tablet commandments, which Paul referred to as the ministry of death and condemnation, they somehow think that those were separate because they were written on stone. That isn't the case at all. Uh, they were referred to in the law as the tablets of the covenant. Which covenant? Not the new covenant. <laughs> the old one. And you can't have both covenants in effect at the same time because there's a, a huge contrast there. They are not alike. 
and and the Bible explains this. I'm, I'm going to make a new covenant with you, not like the one I made with your fathers back in uh, the days of Moses and Egypt and all that. I, this is going to be different. What's different about it? You're going to get away from the sin consciousness thing because I am going to deal with sin once and for all. I'm paraphrasing here, but God was going to deal with this once and for all through the body of Jesus Christ and that sacrifice and that blood. That's what God was going to do, and that's what he did. And so uh, whereas sins were covered under the blood of bulls and goats under the first covenant, under the blood of Jesus Christ, one sacrifice, not many, but one sacrifice removed them forever, took sin away. Behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. That's what Jesus did. Sin is no longer the issue between us and God because Jesus dealt with it. Some people stuck in a mindset of law will assume that we're saying sin doesn't matter, sin as much as you want, it doesn't, you know, it, 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 sin's not a bad thing. Uh, they'll think that's what we're saying. It's not what we're saying. It's just that that's a reflex people have when they're stuck in a legalistic mindset, not understanding the grace of the gospel, the gift of righteousness, and everything that God accomplished for us through that finished work. Only a couple minutes left here, Joel, so we'll kind of wrap up this this uh, stepping stone with the law in our series here and, and move on to the Psalms and the prophets next week. Yeah, those are those are good words because that is often what we get accused of, um, saying that sin doesn't matter, sinful behavior doesn't matter, because we're saying that we're dead to the law and, and instead we're alive in Christ uh, and that we don't, we're not under the law. Uh, we're not saying Again, that sin is good. We're not saying, oh, go out and live a life of sin. We're saying that the law is not the answer. The law never was the answer. The law caused sin to increase. It caused death and condemnation. But the ministry of Jesus, the ministry of the Spirit, the ministry of life in Christ is what enables us and teaches us to live godly in Christ Jesus. Paul said that it, the grace of God appeared. It was the grace of God that teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts and, and to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. The law could not do that. The law told us to not do those things, to not live ungodly and unrighteously, but it couldn't help us. And Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than all the other apostles, yet not I but the grace of God which was with me. So if you are concerned or worried about being dead to the law and not trying to live by the law, if for some reason that scares you, remember <laughs> that Paul said we had to be dead to it. He wasn't afraid to say that it's by grace. I live by grace, not by law. And so hopefully that gives us a good summary of the law. Again, we didn't really go into complete detail on this. It's a big, ser bigger series that we're doing here on summarizing the scriptures. And next week, we'll move on to something else. We'll move on to talking about the Psalms and give a little bit of a summary of what they're about. There's a lot of law talk in the Psalms, but is that what the Psalms are really about? We'll talk about that next week on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.